Thanks for tuning in. I'm Paul Yi for Arirang News. Let's start with the headlines. After months of political deadlock, the National Assembly finally passes legislation on pension reforms, as well as a controversial new bill related to the Sewaho Ferry disaster, which is raising concerns for the presidential office. The Asia Security Summit is set to open in Singapore, gathering the defense chiefs from 26 countries. At the top of the agenda, resolving disputes in the South China Sea and addressing provocations by North Korea. And South Korea's health minister vows all-out efforts to prevent the spread of the MERS virus. This as two more people are confirmed to be infected on the peninsula, while 120 others are under close observation. Starting off at the National Assembly, it took two extraordinary sessions and down-to-the-wire negotiations. The rival lawmakers were able to finally pass the much-awaited pension reforms, as well as a controversial new bill on Friday. Our Chi Gil has the details. The ruling Henry Party praised the passage of the civil servant pension reform bill after months of bipartisan deadlock. We are grateful to have come up with a successful conclusion amid tough conditions. For some, the reform bill may look hasty, but it was the best result given the limited amount of time. The main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy also said it was a significant outcome that would alleviate the fiscal burden for the country's pension management. In regards to changes to the national pension system for the public, the MPAD said the special parliamentary committee and the social consultation body established with the passage of the reform bill have important work ahead. From now on, the government should seek ways to strengthen the broader national pension and earn the people's trust. However, one of the bills passed on Friday drew criticism from the presidential office of Chang Wade. The revised parliamentary bill gives lawmakers the power to request changes to presidential orders. The MPAD strongly supported it, aiming to request revisions to the ordinance concerning an independent probe into the Seoul ferry disaster. The revised bill may violate the constitutional division of powers and ultimately paralyze the executive branch's authority. The presidential office urged the assembly to carry out a thorough review. However, the rival parties stress the revised bill does not infringe on the judicial right to review legislation or executive rights. Jim Young-gye, Arirang News. Two more MERS cases have been reported in Korea on this Friday, while Chinese authorities confirmed that the high-risk patient who flew to Beijing earlier this week is definitely carrying the deadly virus. Now that's a total of 10 Korean MERS patients. Our Han Dun has the latest. MERS fears are escalating as the suspected Korean patient who defied home quarantine and flew to China tested positive. Chinese health authorities made the announcement Friday after he completed diagnostic tests at a hospital in Beijing. Local authorities are now tracing his footsteps over the four days of his stay there, already isolating 35 people who had close contact with him. Luckily, none of them has developed MERS symptoms as of yet. Things aren't looking any better in Korea. Two more cases have been confirmed, lifting the tally of MERS patients to 10. The latest victims are a patient who shared the same room as the first MERS victim and a health care worker who treated him. All the cases are secondary infections from the first patient. About 120 people categorized as high risk are now in home quarantine. Fears are growing among Koreans as the virus spreads, but the welfare ministry has yet to come up with clear-cut measures to prevent further transmissions. More Koreans are wanting to know where the virus first broke out, at which hospital. But the welfare ministry has told Arirang TV they don't plan to reveal the information anytime soon for safety reasons. Officials say releasing the information could escalate fears to an unnecessary level and have a negative impact on patients who visit the hospital in question. Han Dan, Arirang News. And as the virus spreads in Korea, fear is spreading too. Three out of four Koreans think MERS is dangerous, and some experts are worried it may be mutating into a more contagious form. Kwon Soa explains. Not that contagious. That's how authorities and health experts have repeatedly described the MERS virus. 
But as the number of confirmed patients rose to nine in just over a week, fear is growing that the illness may have mutated into a more contagious form, as the first Korean patient appears to have infected the other eight. That's why experts refer to him as a possible super spreader. Previous studies show that on average, a MERS patient can transmit the virus to just 0.7 people. Experts say the deadly SARS virus, which killed nearly 800 people worldwide, spread rapidly because of a mutation. When the outbreak began in 2002, the average number of secondary infections per person was less than one. By the end of the year, it had grown to two to three people. Both MERS and SARS are members of the coronavirus family, which mostly affects the respiratory system. Given the way MERS has spread over the last nine days, Koreans are now much more concerned. A study conducted by RealMeter shows more than 75 percent see MERS as dangerous, while less than 11 percent aren't worried. Although there is no vaccine or cure for the illness yet, public fear may be tamed a little as researchers are discussing the introduction of a self-diagnosis kit. It's currently in use for animals, takes just 15 minutes, and is exported to the Middle East, the origin of the MERS virus. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. The chief nuclear envoys of South Korea and the United States were in Beijing on Thursday to seek ways to resume the long-stalled six-party talks on North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Arirang's Kim Hyun-bin reports. South Korea's envoy Hwang jung kuk and his American counterpart Sung Kim held separate talks with China's chief nuclear envoy Wu Dawei on Thursday to demand Beijing play more of a constructive role in pressuring the North to give up its nuclear ambitions. But China rebuffed the attempt to make it do more of the legwork. North Korean issues are a joint responsibility and each nation needs to put in more constructive efforts. China says the six-party members should be more lenient with North Korea, and it urged Seoul and Washington to refrain from holding large-scale joint military drills. China claims to have done its fair share by taking the initiative and responsibility when dealing with Pyongyang. China is a responsible nation. As one of the leading nations, we will take necessary actions to deal with North Korea's nuclear program. Also on Thursday, officials from the five countries involved in the six-party talks held an informal meeting in Tokyo. During the so-called Northeast Asia Cooperation Dialogue, which North Korea chose not to attend, the officials are known to have shared views on a broad range of issues related to Pyongyang's nuclear and missile development and how to deal with the issue. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. The Shangri-La Dialogue will kick off in Singapore in just the next few hours. Defense chiefs from 26 nations are attending the regional security talks, discussing matters such as friction in the South China Sea and North Korean provocations. Na Hong-kyung has the details on South Korea's agenda. For Korea, the focus is on bilateral talks between the defense chief Han Min-gu and his Japanese counterpart Gen Nakatani. That meeting is expected to take place on Saturday on the sidelines of the Asia Security Summit. It's especially notable because the two chiefs have not sat down face to face in more than four years due to icy relations stemming from historical differences between Seoul and Tokyo. Officials at Korea's defense ministry say the main agenda will be deterring North Korea's nuclear and missile threats, but another matter is bound to come up the recent revision of the U.S. Japan defense guideline. It's opened up questions about the possibility of Japan supporting the U.S. military in the case of war in Korea, a sensitive prospect given the colonial history between the two neighbors. So there's lots of pressure on Han and Nakatani to come to a substantive agreement on follow-up measures, such as when and under what circumstances Seoul will permit aid from Tokyo's military and to what extent the two countries will share military information. In regards to the security of the Korean Peninsula, a trilateral meeting between Seoul, Washington and Tokyo, as well as a two-way session between Seoul and Beijing, will address North Korea's recent threats, including its claim to have successfully test-fired a submarine-launched ballistic missile. Na Hyun-kyung, Arirang News. More and more residents are said to be getting addicted to drugs in North Korea in what is being described as a serious social issue. A North Korean defector organization called the North Korea People's Liberation Front said Friday 
that drugs were being used as a means to bring in foreign currency since the late Kim Jong-il's reign. The group says that the North Korean regime has cultivated drugs at home such as opium and methamphetamines and sold them abroad via illegal trafficking. They say the problem is currently so widespread that even middle school students carry drugs for use as bribes. Unmanned vehicles and aerial drones are expected to make up a 150 billion U.S. dollar market over the next decade. The South Korean government is taking notice and offering its support to the country's leading research labs and its latest startups. Chase Sun reports. While visiting the Korea Aerospace Research Institute on Friday, President Buck took a spin in an unmanned ground vehicle or driverless car developed by Hyundai Motor. She also checked out the country's latest drone technology. For example, drones were recently used for search and recovery in quick stricken Nepal, and the U.S. has developed a special model that travels inside a hurricane to get real time data. In Korea, unmanned undersea vehicles are currently used for resources development and to monitor seismic activity on the ocean floor. A growing number of these devices are being used commercially and by private individuals. The global unmanned vehicle market size is expected to expand by 20 percent to 150 billion U.S. dollars over the next 10 years. Referring to this rapid growth, the president urged officials and the private sector to work together as time is of the essence. Uh, Korea's small drones are already losing price competitiveness against Chinese rivals, and developed nations are moving ahead with improvements to the technology. To help the country catch up, the government vowed to cooperate with the private sector over the next three years. The military is expected to start using Korea's high-speed tilt-rotor drone next year, and the government has offered more support to Korean SMEs that develop key components for driverless cars. Choi Yoo-sun, Arirang News. Korea's industrial output has fallen for the second consecutive month, raising concerns over the nation's economic health. Chances are, according to experts, that the figures will rebound in the second half of the year. Kim Min-ji reports. Data from Statistics Korea shows production across all sectors fell 0.3 percent in April from the previous month. That marks a fall for the second straight month. The agency attributed the decline in output to slowing exports, which in turn also weakened business investment. Korea's exports have been on a downward trend, with overall outbound shipments falling 8.1 percent in April from the same month last year. Domestic consumption improved in April. However, experts say the underlying trend is not all that positive. Global economic conditions haven't been good, so Korea's exports have been recording minus growth. Therefore, production has been bad. The figures will start to pick up in the second half, but that's due to a base effect from last year. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the economy is improving. And the economic conditions are reflected in the business sentiment among local firms, with the key index tipping for the first time in four months in May. According to the Bank of Korea, the business survey index for the manufacturing sector tumbled to 75, down five points from the previous month. A number below 100 means a larger number of firms feel pessimistic. Experts attribute the downturn to fewer working days due to several national holidays and slow exports. With the competitiveness of Korea's exports falling on the weak Japanese yen, experts say Korean firms need to focus on raising the quality of their products, while the government needs to consider measures to stabilize the local currency. Kim min Arirang News. Creative freedom and a test-free environment. Those aren't qualities usually associated with the Korean education system, but the government is trying to change that. Kim ji shows us a new program that's designed to give students a little more support. This is no ordinary school entrance ceremony. Enrolling students take center stage, presenting their hopes, dreams and expectations for the new year, looking for a fresh educational experience. 
Korea's education system is notorious for its grueling study hours and expensive private tutoring. To remedy those issues, the government is trying to foster a learning culture like this free year program designed to help students explore career options at an early age. Named after the classic Greek novel, the Odyssey School aims to give students more breathing room and space to nurture their personal talents and interests, which could help launch lifetime careers. For one year, students are exempt from midterms and finals so they can focus on various extracurricular programs and vocational experiences. I want to be a singer when I grow up. I'm looking forward to the program's mentoring sessions with professional singers and college students. Forty students were selected to participate in the pilot program. The education ministry plans to expand the program to all high school freshmen in the coming years. At first, I was worried that my son wouldn't be able to compete academically or get high scores once he returns to school after the program. But meeting the teachers here and seeing the curriculum, I'm not concerned anymore. The current system makes students ignore their unique qualities. If the free year program works, I think it could be a model case for other education systems in Asia that have similar problems. A year from now, these students will return to school and fall back into their regular studies. Hopefully by then they'll have more confidence and a better idea of where they're headed and how they get there. Kim Jeon, Aideang News. That's all for now. We'll be back with more at 10 p.m. Korea time.